It's always nice to have your reverend close by. Amen. She saved me from that. Glory to God. Uh, good morning, church. Are we excited to be in God's presence today? Glory, glory. Um, as uh, Pastor Sharina said, my name is Bash, and I'm one of the elders of the church, and it's a privilege for me to be standing before you today and standing as a vessel that God has sent to speak. I would like to appreciate every one of you seated. I also would like to appreciate the pastors, the reverends, the whole team in the church. And I also want to thank God for this opportunity. And just like as I always do, every time I have an opportunity to preach or to teach, I would like to appreciate my queen, the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh, as my lovely wife. Uh, you know, after the salvation of my soul, I think that's the best thing that's happened to me. Amen. All right, please let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for this lovely moment. We want to thank you, Father, Lord, because unto thee shall the guardian of your people be. Father, Lord, speak to us this morning. None of us will leave here the same way we've come. Touch our heart, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Uh, recently, uh, the elders and the pastors embarked on a mission. On a fasting mission. A three days fasting. Which I tagged Mission Impossible. <laughs> if you've seen any of the Tom Cruise movies, uh, that's how the fasting was for me. <laughs> I've been a Christian for a long time, but I've never gone through this. And when I was, you know, when we discussed it in the meeting, I was like, God have mercy. <laughs> and... I found out that I had to prepare for it. And little by little, I started missing my breakfast. I was now missing breakfast and lunch. So, you know, I started preparing myself for that particular event. Lo and behold, the day started. The three days fasting. Day one. It went well. Then day two. Oh, God, have mercy. Then my children noticed Daddy was just a bit sluggish. <laughs> and Daddy was a bit, you know, quiet. He didn't really talk a lot. I was saving energy. <laughs> then my last son, Ife, he found out that I had been fasting for two days. Then one lovely morning, he came up to me and he said, Daddy, you've not eaten for two days. Daddy, you're going to die. <laughs> he said, Daddy, you're going to die. And to the glory of God, I didn't die. <laughs> Amen. And it's a testimony to be here today. So it's, it's amazing also, you know, when you want to embark on anything, you prepare for it. So for the past few weeks, we've been in the prepare series. It's been an amazing moment. Do you all agree? Ah, we can do better than that. Do we agree? Yeah. Great. So we, we've gone through vessels, we've gone through the net, the green net, amen. We've gone through um, the ark, building of the ark. And it's good to know that if we give God a vessel, it's good to know that when you give God a vessel, it will fill it till it overflows. It's good to know that when you give God a net, he will mend it and fill it with a bountiful harvest. It's also amazing that when we build an ark for God, he will fill it and keep us safe. So today, we'll be focused on the heart. Let's see what will happen if we give God our hearts. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have any vessel I don't have the green net. I don't have the ark. But to the glory of God, every one of you seated here, you all came in with your heart. Amen. We all came in with our heart. And you all agree with me that the physical heart is a vital organ of the human body. 
and blood and oxygen flowing in and out of the earth. And that keeps us moving, that keeps us alive. Now, when I was younger, my dad wanted me to become a medical doctor in Africa when there's a profession missing in your family dynasty. It's on to you, the child, to make that happen. Unfortunately, I told my dad, I can't, I can't do biology. I can't even see blood. So, lo and behold, I turned out to be an engineering doctor. Glory to God. <laughs> he didn't get exactly what he wanted. But for my little knowledge of human anatomy, I understand that the supply of the right amount of blood into the heart at the right pressure, at the right flow rate, at the right velocity is important to keep you alive. So similarly, in our spiritual journey, our spiritual heart also needs the right word, the right people, the right thought, and the right atmosphere for you to dwell in. If you look at the symbol of the human heart, it looks something like this. I won't bother you with all the details of the human heart, but that's how our heart looks like. And the other symbol on the other side is how the heart is represented. And guess what? Those of you that are always in love with God or loving someone else, we all know this imagery, isn't it? It's a symbol for the heart and love. Amen. And it's important for us to know that God loves us so much that he died for us on the cross that we might be set free. God's heart is important with how we also live and dwell within our own heart system. God's heart is towards us. God is calling us and he's saying, my son, my daughter, I'm calling unto you to seek me. So the question is, what is your heart made up of? What is your spiritual heart made up of? You know, somebody, some people say, oh, the heart is made of gold. Have you guys heard that phrase before? It has a heart of gold. It's a dangerous thing to have a heart of gold. Because if you have a, if you have a heart of gold, it can be stolen. Rather, it's important to have the heart of God. Where no one can steal, no one can break, no one can damage. Amen. Amen. So no matter what your heart type is, it's important that we make sure that our heart is there towards God. You know, I looked into the Bible and I found out, wait a minute. The heart is mentioned in the KJV more than 800 times. So if that's the case, it means it matters a lot, isn't it? Do you all agree? It matters a lot. So, as the physical heart is important to our sustenance, so also our spiritual heart is central to every aspect of our human life. You know, when the Bible speaks about the heart, it's actually referring to your mind the thoughts, your will, and your emotions. Every choice you make, every decision you make, everything you do flows out of the nature of your heart. That is why the Bible gives us such scriptures. In Proverbs 4.23, Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 23.7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Luke 6.45 A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Every one of us here 
we are a product of what kind of seeds have dropped into our heart. What kind of seeds have been sown over the years? So our heart is a function of, if I can use the term based on maths, is a function of your past experience, your current experience, your thoughts, what you see, what do you hear, what you text, what you think. So today we'll be looking at a life of one of the kings in the Bible, Jehoshaphat, and how he prepared his heart to seek the Lord. Before I forget, the title of the message is, Prepare the Heart to Seek the Lord. Prepare your heart to seek the Lord. If we can open our Bibles quickly to 2 Chronicles 17. 2 Chronicles 17. We'll see how Jehoshaphat's heart was at the beginning. 2 Chronicles 17, 1 to 6 and verse 10. And Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto Balaam. Let's take note of those words that are in bold. Amen. First one was strengthened himself. He said the next one was walked in the first ways of his father. Moving on. But sought to the, to the Lord God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established, you know, that's when you get KJV. That should be established. Amen. So the, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. And all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents. And he had riches and honor in abundance. Verse 6. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. Verse 10. And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the land that were round about Judah. So that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, we'll see the nature of Jehoshaphat's heart. The Bible makes us to understand that he walked, why? In the first ways of King David. The Bible makes us to understand that he kept the commandments. The Bible makes us to understand that he flee, or he made sure he wasn't dwelling in the presence of evil. His delight was continuously what? In the Lord. Jehoshaphat's heart was stirred or inclined to pleasing God. So as a believer, in our everyday life, we all come from different homes, different backgrounds. We all work in different places. We all have different skill sets. Amen. We all have different careers. We all have different stories. Amen. It's important to know, based on Sir Isaac Newton's law, third law of motion, it says in every action, there is what? Equal and what? Opposite what? Reaction. So, bear in mind that the nature of Jehoshaphat's heart caused a reaction from who? From God. The Bible records just where we read that there was peace in the land as a result of how he has prepared his heart for the things of God. I'm encouraging us this morning that we should prepare our hearts or renew our hearts or cleanse our hearts or pray that the Lord will mend our hearts so that we will seek after him. Touch your neighbor and say, prepare your heart. Come on, church, we can do better than that. Prepare your heart. Ah, God bless you. Amen. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 19. 
We're still on the story. Because of time, I will just skip 18. I will mention the story that happened to Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 18. But let's focus on 2 Chronicles 19, verse 1 to 9. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. Just before I start reading downwards, in chapter 18, Jehoshaphat got messed up with the wrong company. We all remember King Heab, the very wicked king. For whatever reason, he got entangled with King Heab. And not just that, also he set up in a relationship with someone that he should not be in a relationship with. And that he almost lost his life in 2 Chronicles 18. But thank God, God saved him. Amen. So moving on from verse 2 here. And Jehu, the son of Anani, the sayer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the grooves out of the land and hast prepared thine heart. To seek God. And Joseph had dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Bethsheba to Mount Ephraim, and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what ye do. For ye judge not for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Wherefore now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, no respect of persons, no taking, no taking of gifts. Moreover, in Jerusalem, did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and of the priests and the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. And verse 9, And he charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. You know, from what happened to Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles 18, like I said earlier, he almost lost his life. You can see how he responded to the correction from the priest. You know, from his name, his name means Jehovah as what? Judged. And it's fascinating to see how God has been with him based on the nature of his heart. From where we started in 2 Chronicles, the Bible said he walked in the way of God. And I pray we also walk in the way of God in the name of Jesus. The question is, who are you in company with? Who are your closest friends? Who do you get counsel from? It is very important. Because seeds are sown by the words that you hear. Amen. You know, when I was younger, I had, when I first gave my life to Christ, I had some friends that, they were not bad guys. No, they were good people, but I couldn't be on the same frequency with them because my heart was prepared to seek what? The Lord. And you know what? God sees everything. God sees the nature of our heart, what we do in the secret and what we do in the open. It's not eating. In fact, guess what? We're on CCTV from heaven. Amen. Amen. God sees everything. So tell your neighbor, God sees everything. Now the question is, why was the Lord with Jehoshaphat? Why was the Lord with him? His heart was prepared. His heart was prepared. And he was a man after what? God's heart. He was always seeking after God. 
he followed God's commandments. The direction of his heart, the compass of his heart, was towards pleasing will, pleasing God. And guess what? As humans, we make mistakes. Joseph had made his own mistakes. Every one of us seated here, we've made some mistakes in the past. We might be making some currently. But the Bible has made us to understand that if we turn around, it will do a change our lives. So, you know, there's a lovely quote from A.W. Tozer, which I want to share, A.W. Tozer. It says, to seek God does not narrow one's life. Rather, it brings it to the level of highest possible fulfillment. Amen. So just like he made some mistakes, God is encouraging us this very, very morning, lovely morning, that whatever you've done in the past, forget about it. If your heart has been broken, our God is able to mend it. If your heart has been stolen, our God is able to do a replace it. If your heart is currently polluted with all sorts of things, our God is able to cleanse it. He has said in his word that if we confess our sins, he is what? Able and just to forgive us and cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. So the question is, just like Jehoshaphat, when he was corrected, Based on the nature of his heart, he didn't say, who do you think you're talking to? Do you know I'm the king of Judah? No. He took what? Correction. Do you know I've been a Christian for the past 35 years? Who are you to preach the word to me? Who are you to correct me? Do you know the grace and the anointing of God on my life? Who are you to talk to me? No. He had a humble heart was willing to be corrected. In my house, I have, I have three lovely sons. You can see how tall I am. I'm about 6'2". Those guys can bring me down to earth. They'll tell me, oh, Daddy, you said we shouldn't do this. But you just did that. And you know what I quickly do? I say, I'm sorry. Do you understand? I struggle with that with my own father. My father never said sorry to me for anything. Rather, he preferred to give me gifts. So we have a father that is able to correct us. Or we have brothers and sisters around us that can correct us. It's important that we have a humble heart. Amen. It's important. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 138 verse 6. It says, God is close." To the humble. But the proud, he knows from what? Afar. I pray this morning that anyone whose heart has been broken will be mended. I pray that anyone whose heart needs a cleansing, experiences an overhaul in the name of Jesus. I pray for anyone whose heart needs a replacement. That God will replace such a heart in the name of Jesus. I pray God will provide us with a new and clean heart in Jesus' name. You know, years ago, I gave my life to Christ. I was born a Muslim. And when I gave my life to Christ, oh my God, it was like Third World War took place in my family. And I just thank God for how God helped me. I surrounded myself with the right people. And guess what? The Spirit of God was breaking those, you know, those, those things that shouldn't be in your heart. Previously, I used to be a very difficult person. Amen. My anger level was up there. But guess what? God has helped me. God has cleansed my heart continuously. God is renewing my heart continuously. And I pray that shall be our portion in the name of Jesus. 
You know, from the word art, I, you know, thought about an acronym on how to share this. And I think God helped me to come up with something. So H-E-A-R-T. Number one, it's important to hear what God is saying to you through the Bible in your secret place and with trusted people around you. E stands for empathize with others. Try to understand what they're going through. Have compassion on others. Do not judge. A, activate your faith. Our faith should never be dormant. Our faith should continually be what? Activated. The Bible says faith without works is what? Dead. Act on your faith. R, respond positively, just like Jehoshaphat. And humbly to what he has commanded you to do. Every one of us seated here, there's a commandment for each of us. There's a purpose while we are on the surface of the earth. The question is, are you responding to the purpose why God designed you? T, thankful for what God has done for you. Currently doing and trusting to what he will do next. Amen. You know, together, I just want us to, you know, speak these words together. So, on the next slide, thank you. We're going to make a declaration this morning. And we're going to take each alphabet, H-E-A-R-T, and we're going to say together. Amen. So, let's, let's give this a go. One, two, go. Hear what God is saying to me. Empathize with others. Activate my faith. Respond positively and humbly to what he has commanded me to do. Thankful for what God has done for my family and I. So shall it be in our lives in the name of Jesus. Charles Finley, share these words. Charles Finley, share these words. He says, the heart determines... The life. And the life reveals what? The heart. You know, Romans 10, chapter 10. So Romans chapter 10, verse 10 says, For with the heart man what? Believe it unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto what? Salvation. It's important as brothers and sisters in the faith that we seek ye first the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? It's righteousness. And the Bible makes us to understand that all these things shall be what? Added unto you. So just as it was with Jehoshaphat, God is seeking for Believers with a tender heart. Amen. God is seeking for believers with a clean heart. You know, it was David that said in Psalm 51, verse 10, it says, Create in me a new heart and renew what? A right spirit within me. Create in me a new heart. Oh, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me one more time. Create in me a new heart. Oh, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away, cast me not away from thy presence, O oh Lord, and take not, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me, O oh God. Restore unto me the joy of Father, thank you. Oh, 
and renew a right spirit within me. Thank you, Father. Pray the Lord will renew a right spirit within us. God is seeking for a willing and obedient heart. And God is seeking for a contrite and humble spirit. Ask your neighbor, what kind of heart do you have? Don't bother to answer that. Don't worry. It's between you and God. Amen. But the good news is, no matter what we're going through, God wants us to prepare our heart to seek him. No matter the challenges on the surface of this earth, because there will be challenges. There are challenges. Some you know of, some you don't even know what's going to happen next. But it's important that we prepare our heart to seek the Lord. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. It says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it's time to seek the Lord. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. It's important that we prepare our heart for the blessings ahead, for the challenges ahead. Break up the fallow ground. Amen. Sow in righteousness. Sow good seeds. Those seeds that you need to take out, take them out. Sow good seeds. And Jesus made us a promise, just like the band joins us. Amen. Amen. I've been alone up here since. Amen. Man can join me now. <laughs> Jesus made us a promise in John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. John 14, verse 1 to 3. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many what? Mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. If the Lord has made such a promise to us, it is important that our heart is what? Prepared to seek the Lord. It is important that we love not the world, not the things that are in the world. The Bible records that if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And what are those things that are in the world? The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. God does not want half of our heart. He doesn't want a three-quarter. He wants the whole package. He wants our whole hearts. It's important that we give God our whole heart and again seek him in righteousness be aware that the battle cannot be fought alone you need God on your side as we bow our heads I just want you to speak to God this morning I want you to speak to God ask him Lord prepare my heart to seek you in righteousness Father Lord renew my heart is there anyone here that you've not given your life to Jesus is there anyone here that is struggling with one thing or the other is there anyone here that needs a renewal of their hearts is there anyone here that needs a mending I just want you to signify by raising up your hand Anyone here that needs a mending of their heart? If you're such a person, just take a bold step. Everybody's eyes are closed. It's just you and the Father. You're asking God to renew your heart. You're asking God to cleanse your heart. You're asking God to create in me a new heart. Just take that step by standing up. Amen. I'm not going to call you forward. Just stand up to the glory of God. I said God has the perfect CCTV he can see every one of us I just want to encourage you to touch your heart touch your physical heart and begin to speak to God begin to tell God Father renew my heart 
create in me a new heart. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Just ask God to come into your heart. Whatever that thing might be, lay it down at the feet of the Master. Lay it down at His feet. Just speak to God, Lord, mend my heart. Father, fix my heart, Lord. Give me a heart that is thirsty after you. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for this morning. We want to thank you, Father, because your word has gone forth. Thank you, Father, Lord, for what you said concerning each and every one of us this morning. Father, Lord, I pray create in us a new heart let our heart be tender let our heart be willing and obedient let our heart be holy towards you let us seek you together as a church Lord Father have your way in our lives